Well, we move on now to looking at the starting lineups tonight here between Minnesota and Penn State in Rec Hall. And the starters tonight are brought to you by Tachikara. And you look at the starters for the Golden Gophers. Will Height and Hart on the left side. Tap, the two Tap sisters in the middle with Lohman part of that group as well. Seliker Swenson is the setter. And Dalian Liz Rosado is the libero for the Golden Gophers. For the hometown team in the Penn State Nittany Lions, Allie Franti and Simone Lean on the left, and Haley Washington, Tori Goral in the middle. Heidi Thielen has moved to the right side from the middle, and then Abby Dietering and Kendall White will be your setter and libero. Head coach for the Nittany Lions needs no introduction. Penn State head coach Russ Rose, 38th season for him, seven national titles, the five-time ABCA National Coach of the Year. And the most recent recipient of that award, Hugh McCutcheon, last year's ABCA Coach of the Year when he led the Gophers to their first Big Ten title since 2002 and the national semifinal for the first time since 2009. And this Minnesota team is atop the rankings, the number one overall team in the nation for the first time since 2004, carrying over that success that they had from a year ago and hoping to build on it this year and potentially go after a national championship. Well, I was just looking at the Russ Knows Volleyball t-shirts. Uh, <laughs> Hugh Knows Volleyball, too. I mean, great accolades for both of those coaches. going to be a well-thought-out, well-planned match tonight on both sides. We have seen some great ones between these two teams over the years to the powerhouses in Big Ten Volleyball. But right now, if you talk about a Big Ten powerhouse, you're talking about the top nine teams in the conference. As we're underway from Rec Hall, Haley Washington with the first serve, and she creates the point off the serve. Washington has Penn State on top early. I like it. Right away, Washington is back there. Different rotation start for Penn State. We're used to seeing them start in either row six or row one right now. Haley Washington a middle, but she can also get it done with her serve. Gophers this time get the ball up to their setter. And then a whistle called on Penn State on a double contact on the setter and Abby Dietering. Just a little mix up there. Keaton getting in the way. Abby needs to take that first step. It's still early, folks, so just kind of getting their uh, feet wet. First look here on BTN at Penn State and Minnesota, and you get the new setter for the Nittany Lions and Abby Dietering transferred from Florida. That ball coming over the net off the serve receive, and Dietering trying to go back to Tori Goral, and that'll be out of play. And some new faces on both sides of the net. Both sides, a, a lot of, uh, you know, a big gap to fill on Minnesota like we talked about and we continue to talk about with Santana being gone. But on the other side, you're right, it's a whole new look. Dolly Santana, the Big Ten Player of the Year a season ago, led the conference in kills per set. Goral, they're going to say that was a block that stayed in for Minnesota. Big block by Alexis Hart, freshman from Missouri. Awesome job up there. You'll notice she's taking that slide approach, Goral, but Hart really turns that left hand in and forces it down the line. Solo block for the freshman. Simone Lee on the tip. Just trying to stay out of the net. It's acrobatics, and that one is going to be long of the line. Looked close, but Minnesota jumping out to the lead here in the first set on a couple Penn State mistakes. Well, right away, you can tell Minnesota's very efficient. Penn State right now is a little wobbly. Uh, just some offsets, not really clean volleyball. It's still early. Another chance for Goral. Lee the swing, goes off the touch for the kill. It's a nice signature kill for Simone Lee up there on the left side. She's got a little bit of hang time, and she uses the tips of the blocker's hand so well because she puts some heat on it. So, so you'll see that ball flying out of bounds a lot tonight. Here's Molly Lohman in the middle. She'll terminate for the Gophers. It's nice to see Molly Lohman. I know she had a, a successful spring and summer season getting ready for this year, but she goes in hard for this almost like a one play. It's a little bit away from the setter, so tough to defend against, but she's got that cutback shot. Go for Libero, Dalian Liz Rosado to serve. Now it's Lee on the right side. And that one going to be wide of the line, so another point and an attack here again for Penn State to make that their fourth in the early going of the first set. And you'll see Simone Lee on the right side of the court on this one in rotation one. 
It's a six to one run for the Gophers and they lead the first set six to two over Penn State. We'll be back to Happy Valley in a moment. Back in rec hall, set one between number one Minnesota and number 15 Penn State. It's a six to two lead for the Gophers. Four airs already attacking for the Nittany Lions. Tough serve from Rosado. Here's a swing for Lee. And off the block and out of play, the kill for Paige Tech. Uh, Penn State right now is really struggling on this rotation. You see Thielen out to the left. Simone's on the right. She's normally not playing left side, so she was a little off balance there, didn't get her feet planted in order to turn it in. And normally she's a really strong blocker. Gophers the new number one team in the nation after the loss by Nebraska to Ohio State. There's a good roll shot that goes down for Simone Lee. It really started from a three-point pass from Kendall White, a new libero for Penn State. She's right on the money right there. And unfortunately, beginning of this run, she had a three-point pass, and they weren't able to capitalize. And I think we'll see those differences through the night, the amount of errors and what they're able to uh, produce out of those great passes. And Liz, we talk about the airs that Penn State has had. The issue for them and their three losses this year has been the attacking airs and the service airs, as we see another one from Laney Pierce, who comes off the bench. Penn State against North Carolina hit just 204, 154 against Colorado, and 227 against Stanford in their three losses with numerous attack airs, numerous service airs, and even in matches that they won, like this past weekend, in straight sets against Michigan State and Michigan, they had nine service airs in each of those matches. So cleaning things up from the service line and attacking, key for Penn State. How about in serve receive as well? As a mistake that we did not see from Allie Franti this past weekend when she was perfect in serve receive against Michigan. And I think right here, this is what the coaching staff is looking at Penn State. They want them to compete. So forget about this, forget about the errors. How are you gonna compete against a team like Minnesota? Franti, as it comes back off of the gopher block, they're gonna say no, it was off the antenna from Franti first, and so the point to the Gophers. It was a real tight set, and if you notice, Abby, the setter, is really reaching high. It's outside of the play, and a, a tough swing for Franti to get around. Good look on the replay, straight into the antenna, and there's a stuff for Tap. It is all Gophers early on. <laughs> Very strong defensively. They've got their number. They're reading it really well. Paige Tap up there takes that nice swing block. Alexis Hart pressing over. But Paige had her number the whole time. If you just watch her eyes, she knows exactly where that ball is going. Another timeout for Penn State as they trail by eight. Minnesota dominant so far in this one. The Penn State fans still into it here in the first set, but it has been a challenge thus far for the Nittany Lions. A couple of quick timeouts by Russ Rose. Six airs for Penn State. They're hitting well below in a negative number at negative 364 and then a couple of service errors. Minnesota has made some nice plays, but the mistakes by Penn State have piled up. Feel it off the block, and there's a kill that Penn State needed. Nice first ball side out opportunity. Perfect pass, so the setter's able to run an offense, something they haven't done yet this set. So goes up strong, Goral goes up strong, and Thielen's right there on the right side pin. And, and Thielen's a traditional middle blocker, middle attacker, so she knows how to hit high, but also add some snap. So there's Swenson from behind the 10-foot line. And Will Height with the swing. That one goes out of play, so a kill for Will Height. You know, she can bring it from the front row, but also in the back row, she passes this ball, gets in position, and takes a strong back row attack spike approach to get it done. And that's why she's so successful right now. She's got a lot of attempts, but a lot of kills to go along with it. It was interesting talking to Hugh McCutcheon this week, and he mentioned he didn't mind if his setter and Samantha Seller Swenson was running the offense off the net. They feel like they can still run things well, and then defensively, they can still get those big stops. Well, I feel like uh, the setter for Penn State right now, Abby, is trapping her hitters a little bit, and she's telegraphing where she's going to go. She needs to be a little bit more deceptive up there, but part of the problem now is, pro is most likely her confidence level. She needs to find that somehow from the leaders on the team and gain some confidence up there. Three team blocks already for Minnesota. 
is Franti trying to put some power on it, and she's hoping to fire up her teammates with that swing. And the difference being is there was a couple feet off the net. So you cannot set tight against Minnesota. She gets her a little bit of room to swing away, and that's all she needs. She's such a strong outside hitter. I mean, look back a couple years ago to Allie Franti's fr freshman season, player of the year. National Freshman of the Year, a second team All-American in her freshman campaign. Numbers went down a little bit last year. She had to do a little bit more for the team as well. And Haley Washington, usually she gets that kind of set, she's going to turn it. Definitely. She's a strong slide attacker, and that's when she's approaching the ball behind the setter and really going after it like a layup. So the ball hangs in the air just enough for her to go after it. First back-to-back -back kills of the night for Penn State. And a tough serve. Minnesota gets it back over, and now Penn State will have a chance. Bump set goes up to Franti. Another chance for Franti. She's looking for a touch call. She won't get it. Not a full spike approach by her, but great job, Minnesota, on the other team. You know, really taking them out, but their blocking is awesome right now. They're not giving them a lot of room to hit around or in between, no seams. And there's the attack from the center position in Dietering. Well, they will get the crowd pumped up. She needs to be an attacker up there, be a threat, offensive threat. And she's big and physical. In her mindset, she needs to be thinking that she's an option. Dietering transferring from Florida after two seasons. She was the 2014 Ohio Gatorade Player of the Year. She's led this Penn State team to a 3.09 hitting percentage on the season and a 3.70 hitting percentage in Big Ten play thus far, but that's been only four matches, so still early on in the year in both of those staff categories. Off the block, tooling is Simone Lee. Well, she found that uh, middle blocker's outside hand and really won after it. You want to test the block, and Simone Lee really went after tap up there to see what she can do. And you always want to start that in the beginning of a match, kind of see what they're made of. Dieter in the lefty swing again, and that'll go for a kill. Good rhythm. Really good rhythm. She got the pass that she needed to get up there. She's a strong lefty. And you want it to be seamless. So nice high pass up there. She's not doing a double pump or anything. She's just swinging away. Penn State starting to show some signs of life here after trailing throughout the majority of the first set. Trying to get back in it, but Will Height going to slow down the run of the Nittany Lions. Their leader, and she's out there for a reason. She gets a lot of attempts. She gets that big backswing, and she sees the whole court. She does a nice job of keeping the ball in front of her. Sarah Will Height coming off of 19 kills, hit over 600 against Purdue in a straight set sweep on the road. Here's Washington down the line. Again, another first ball side out opportunity. You saw the setter go up there, act like she was going to hit. So Bowman hesitated just slightly, left the line open. We saw the energy, the enthusiasm of Haley Washington. Loves to bring that kind of excitement after a big point. And her serve results in a one handed set, but Lowman still puts it away. Well, Samantha Seliger Swenson, she's ranked number two right now in the nation with assists per set. And look at her reach high with that one hand and set and find her middle. And that's why middles have to be up so fast. You never know where that pass is going to go. You have to be that outlet for a setter. Goral cross court, out of play. Automatically, Minnesota is going to that right side pin. So they read the scouting report well. They know Thielen Goral is going to go back there. So their first step is automatic. So that's why there's a double block. 17 to 10 lead for Minnesota in the first set. Penn State has won 10 straight matches, including eight of them in a row in straight sets. They've won 26 consecutive sets, and that streak is in jeopardy. Now Minnesota, no slouch of their own, is there's a big kill from Simone Lee. That had some pace on it. You saw the setter from Penn State pulled back towards the right side of the court. And she was able to push it all the way out to the pin with a little bit more, uh, more of a first tempo ball to it. 
We talk about win streaks, though. The Gophers, 11 match win streaks. Seven of those wins came in straight sets, and they won the last two this past weekend on the road in sweeps against Indiana and Purdue. That one will go out of play, and a mistake, a rare mistake, the first attack error from the Gophers. Good teams force other teams, uh, good teams force other teams uh, into those opportunities where they're able to make those errors. I'm sorry, I screwed that up. My, <laughs> my point being is that good teams are going to force those teams to make those errors. Swenson well off the net, and then there's back-to-back -back errors. That come in a little bit off the serve from Penn State, making things difficult for the Gophers. Definitely, and it all starts with that first contact, whether it's the serve or the pass. You have control. Penn State getting back over negative, and there's another great serve from Dietering. Cutting the lead down to three is at one point. It was a seven-point lead for the Gophers, and Penn State is back in it. Gophers with the lead, but Penn State making a run and getting some of it done on the serve of Abby Dietering. The junior out of Mentor, Ohio, with her first year with the Nittany Lions, transferred from Florida, and won the starting center job over last year's starting center, Brianna Weiskircher, who started early on in this year, but that's how it goes. Russ Rose, he's gonna choose the player who's bringing the best effort. He thought that that was Dietering, the best performance out there, and that's why they've gone with her, the We're transfer the, from Florida. They're both really nice setters, and Brianna has been on campus for quite some time. She, she came to school a little early. She was able to train with the team and really watch those in front of her, like a Ma Micah Hancock. So she's had a lot of time to adjust and get used to the team. However, you know, new people come, and you're able to, you've got to be able to adjust to different types of hitters. And I think, you know, when they were making that decision, they decided on the team chemistry was probably the most important part of the setter decision or who was gonna, who was gonna get the start. And, I, you know, Abby won that out. They're both top quality setters, though. We saw the season primer for Penn State, and they are 12 and three on the year. They've won 10 in a row, but they lost three consecutive matches for the first time since 2002. That's how far back it goes with all the success that Penn State has had. Six of the last nine national championships, all the way back to the early part of the last decade was the last time they lost three matches in a row. And this Nittany Lion team answering back, though, after those losses by rattling off 10 straight matches. Now they're hoping to just complete a comeback here in the first set after trailing by as many as seven points. That serve is long, though, aggressive from Dietering. Another service error for Penn State. Yeah, you want to definitely keep that pressure on the serving line. Don't give them an easy way out. If they don't like that rotation, you've got to make sure they get themselves out of it. So the Gophers have success on the serve of Rosado earlier in this set. Let's see if this rotation works out for them again. Here's Goral looking for the side out. Hart the tip. to the back corner and a great placement from the freshman Alexis Hart. It almost looked like it was going slow motion in the deep corner and I think the Penn State team thought it was going out of bounds which boy she has a lot of range up there. She's swinging high over the block and finding the court. Alexis Hart the three-time Big Ten freshman of the week including this week. There's Thielen who puts it away. She's got those long arms, so she, she's chasing that ball on the slide attack. She keeps it in front of her, snaps high, puts a little bit of heat on it. She's got a little window of opportunity right there, right in between that block. Thielen, the junior out of Edwood, Kentucky, we mentioned that she's played middle, but also shifted to the right side this year. Ninth in the Big Ten in hitting percentage thus far. They like to get a little bit more offense from her, and we've seen some production as of late in Big Ten play from Thielen. Off speed again from Hart. Hart takes the big swing, but the block is there for Penn State. Great assist by Rosado, and she's gotten 
so much better. Last year, I felt like she was in some matches and out, but this year, boy, she is right on the money. When the setter digs the ball, the libero comes in and takes the second contact, and she delivers a nice assist. It was a nice job by the Penn State block, sent it back, and it came off Hart as Penn State got the point, but then Minnesota, they're now five points away from taking the first set. about the new faces on both sides of the net. The biggest change for Minnesota is Alexis Hart stepping in. But with the departure of Dolly Santana, new roles for some of these players from a year ago. Last, uh, last year it was such a left side dominated team. Now it's much better balance from the Gophers. Gophers can't control that ball and Penn State back within three. Keep earning your points on both sides of the net. It started out a little sloppy for Penn State then it shifted a little bit to Minnesota. You need to earn your points, and how that's going to happen is your first contact right here by Kendall White, the quality serve. And it does have Minnesota out of system, and it results in a mistake as Penn State with a tough serve from the freshman in Kendall White. But she is real pretty. Dynamo in the gym, relentless, goes for everything, no matter if it's in the bleachers or not. Minnesota up by two in the first set. We'll come back in a moment. Hugh McCutcheon talking with his team, trying to hold on to the lead that they have had throughout the majority of this first set. Up by just two, we take a look at the season primer for the Golden Gophers. Number one for the first time since 2004. And then you see just four sets during their 11-match win streak that they've dropped. Big Ten title a year ago, went to the national semifinal for the first time since 2009. But at number one ranking, it's the first time they've been number one since 04. The last time that they were the number one team in the nation was also the last time that they defeated Penn State in Rec Hall. Wow, that's uh, quite a coincidence here. Is there Could a correlation? Be. Potentially, we'll see. Minnesota just trying to hang on and win this first set. Each tap. The bump set goes to Franti. by the Penn State block. Another chance for Hart. Good up by the Nittany Lions. Thielen, and it's set back by the Gophers. Crucial rally here in the first set. Off speed from Franti, and the Nittany Lions will have it. Big, big play for Penn State, and I'll tell you why. Simone Lee got subbed in. You see a big block here, but look at that dig by Simone Lee, who traditionally doesn't play back row. She was subbed in for a reason, maybe to get her team fired up, maybe for a potential back row attack. But way to go, Simone Lee, to getting her team fired up and keeping in this game. This was all Gophers early on, and there's no, they're going to say the block out of play. And Minnesota will just keep coming back at you. Their goal is to try to keep you in this match until you make the errors. And that's really the game of volleyball, Mike. I mean, come on. <laughs> It sounds so easy, doesn't it? Don't make any <laughs> errors, and you'll be number one team in the nation. Katie Shaw into the match to serve for Minnesota. And the ace from Shaw. She is a veteran. I've seen her do some amazing things back there, not only from the serving line, but she can dig and pass. And she really caught Franti off guard. Second ace of the first set for the Gophers. They're three points from taking set one. One-handed set, Washington into the floorboards. Great athletic move by Abby Dietering again. A one-handed back set to her trusty middle back there. She's going up hard, showing that elbow up and connecting. Washington three for three thus far. Haley Washington. Eighth in the nation in hitting percentage, hitting 422, and she's perfect early on in this match tonight. Joust at the net. Won by Penn State, but great effort by the Gophers to keep it alive, but then off the block, and Penn State is back within one. Wow, that was great effort by Minnesota. I mean, look at the difference here. You got Abby Dietering and oh, you got Haley Washington first with the setter, and Samantha Seliger Swenson kept that ball alive. 
But great attack, and Paige Tap was right there for it. Great get by Katie Shaw. And State going to try to tie this at 22. Will Height, it's out of play, and we are tied. And we got a set. Here we go. Just took us a while to get there. <laughs> Penn State has not led since it was 1-0 on the ace by Haley Washington to start the match. Keaton Holcomb to serve. Bates Tap responds for the Gophers. One on one opportunity. Again, Haley Washington is up there, but on a strong pass, it's tough to see which side is Samantha going to set to, the left or the right. Third kill of the night for Paige Tap. Two blocks as well. And Crucial contribution for the Gophers. Overpass, and Minnesota has set point. Just a total error on the serve receive. Again, just the fundamentals. It always goes back to the fundamentals. First contact, the passing, the serving, even basic ball control. That wasn't even a tough serve to handle. You just got to stop your feet and freeze your platform right to target. I hope all my middle school kids are watching this match <laughs> right now and listening. Tough one for Petering to get to. Lee sends it over. Shaw will set over to Wilhite. Another chance for Wilhite. Franti has to adjust. Laying out Kendall White. From behind the 10-foot line, Franti with the swing. Can Will Height end it? That'll be wide of the line, and we'll play on in the first set. Wow, great defense by Minnesota. Again, just keeping the ball alive and waiting for Penn State to make those uncharacteristic or characteristic errors they've been making. And Abby Dietering, if she cleans it up a little bit and gives her hitters a better ball, things are going to start off a little bit better for the Lions. Set point number two for Minnesota. Overpass. And put down, no, punch back up, and then Simone Lee hammers it. You gotta love the joust here, especially setter, middle attacker, but look at Rosado. Staying involved, playing that short court game that they play every day before practice, and Penn State finishes it. We go to extra points in the first set. Who would have thought of this when Minnesota was up by seven? Will Height adds another kill, her third, and it's another set point coming up for the Gophers. Tough. That's what I have to say about both of these squads right now, but even so, Minnesota just delivering a nice ball out to the pin to their go-to. Swing and we're tied again. Huge swings on the left side pins. They both trust those outside hitters and giving them a nice ball so they can attack at their highest point. Early on, it didn't look like this match was going to live up to the billing, but now, here at the end of the first set, we're seeing the level of play we expected. Overpass, opportunity for Penn State. Lee. Another chance for Simone Lee and Penn State has climbed all the way back. They have set point. Wow, did you see that defensive play by Brown back there? Simone Lee, big spike approach, huge backswing over the right shoulder. Seven kills and set one for Lee. Can Penn State come all the way back to win the first? Will Height uses the hands. She's just showing herself as a target. You can tell her kind of reach down and say, oops, I didn't mean to do that. But right away, you have to own it. If you go up and block, just own it and turn your hands into the court. Dietering with a long run. Lee with the tip. The coverage there by Minnesota. Set out to Lee. 
Gophers can't get to it, and again, Penn State will have set point. I think Lee has had many swings out there on the left side pin in the last four rallies. Four kills out there, getting a lot of attempts. What a set one we've seen so far. Is Penn State going to end it here? Oh, Minnesota tied again. They do. Can a tap coming through for the Gophers. Three-point pass by their freshman, Alexis Hart. Boy, she is not bothered at all in this environment. She is a cool cat up there. <laughs> she's got her headband on. She's got some gum going there. She's probably saying, set me the ball. Composed is the word that Hugh McCutcheon used to describe Alexis Hart, and we have seen that. Penn State out of system. But yet they still get a point from Simone Lee. What a first set for her. Nine kills. This is what Minnesota wants. They want Lee in the backcourt. Definitely. But they don't want Penn State to have <laughs> set point. They don't. But this is what they want. They want her out of that front row be challenged by somebody else. Set point number three for Penn State. The Gophers have had three set points. Bump set, Thielen trying to end it. Teetering goes out to Franti, Penn State climbs all the way back to take the first set. Well, it may not feel that way, but we've only played one set. 29-27 win in set one for Penn State, and at the end, Simone Lee was unstoppable for Penn State. She had five of the last six points. I'm out of breath just watching her. She started that whole thing by that amazing dig, and then she got to the front row and showed her stuff out there, and the setter delivered. So that was huge for Penn State. Nine kills for Simone Lee. She hit 500 see five of the last six points to end the first set. Penn State was down 13 to six. They were hitting negative 300. They had nine attack errors, but eight of those were very early on in the set and they turned it around. I have to be very impressed with Penn State and Minnesota. You know they still have the talent. They're not gonna be phased by what just happened. They'll come back and play at a level that they have all season long. So we should be in for a great one tonight. It didn't look like it early on, but here we are. After an amazing set one. It's really important to come out. Let's see how Penn State comes out in the beginning right now. Are they able to focus and then refocus to figure out what they need to do in the second set? And what about for Minnesota? Well, Minnesota on the other side, they're not phased at all. Like you said, they're a Final Four team. So they've been in big matches, and they know how to win big matches. They're going to take one point at a time and focus on their ball control. Big stuff for the Nittany Lions to start the second. And they're going to have to cover. So that's a big, that's a big deal. Huge play from all the way out to right side for Hannah Tapp. And she's struggling a little bit to find the court right now. It's just not her set. She needs something maybe in front. Shaw takes that ball. Rosado got to it. Great effort from the Gophers. Again, they'll keep it in play. Another free ball for Penn State. Teetering with the set to Lee. Great defense. Look at this hustle move by Rosado, taking advantage of that long court. And Rec Hall, same thing with the setter, Samantha. It's up to Penn State right now to capitalize on a free ball opportunity. Floral and a whistle on a net violation. It's going to go on Penn State. As big and as athletic as Abby is in the setter position, you cannot set too tight, especially against another physical team like Minnesota. You can stick up that one hand, but you need a little bit more space. Thielen blocks sent back by the Gophers. 
fourth team block now for Minnesota. Minnesota can get in system very fast. They're watching the setter move, taking one step for Lohman and just pressing over. She's not too concerned about closing the block. She's keeping her eyes on the ball and tries to block the actual ball. Go for a over on Simone Lee. Drop by Penn State to keep it off the floor. And then tap, hammers the ball down the line. And that's just pretty volleyball. Very smooth. They have a great rhythm about them. And it all stems from first contact and ball control. Samantha delivers a perfect set for her friend Hannah Tap out there. So she's got a lot of space to work with with the line. Hannah Tap, first team All-American a year ago for Minnesota. Chance for Lee on the right side. There'll be a touch call and another kill for Simone Lee. I'm just watching Rosado back there go to work. <laughs> it's so much fun to watch the Liberos in this conference. They, they keep the ball alive, but oftentimes they don't get credit. The hitter will get credit. Simone Lee with 11 kills, but Libero, you know, the stats that they get are, are digs, but it's all those little plays, the intangibles. Nice play to the middle on the quick to Lohman. Cross body shot. She's got one on one opportunity up there. You want to take advantage. Do not hit right into the block. Go around it. And if you have space, you can do it. Lohman tied a season high nine kills on nine attacks. Also threw in three blocks at Indiana last week. She's now got four kills on five swings tonight. Feeling cross court. Another kill for her, and we're tied at four. And Simone Lee is back there on serve received. She delivered a nice ball, and you see that, that fist pump in from her, something that is unusual uh, as far as passing goes. Not the fist pumping, <laughs> the passing. Kendall White going after the freshman in part. On serve received, and then White! You don't usually see the libero going after her own attack. Will height out of the back row. Francie stuffed down by the Gophers. It's a tough ball. Minnesota's already released. They know exactly where that setter's going to go because she got there late. She's not able to set her middle. So they just release. And then you've got four hands in front of you. Real tough for Francie. Now for Paige Tap. Feeling again cross court, able to put it away. You see the flow going here, Mike. The pass goes up in front, the setter goes against the grain and sends it behind. And then they have a little bit of space to work with. And since Thielen was a middle blocker, she knows how to attack on the right side pin, especially off of one foot. Thielen last year, 24 matches played. She was third on the team in blocks, but offensively didn't get big numbers. Trying to be a little bit more productive on her attacks this year. Dietering goes to Haley Washington. Page tap on the tip. Smart, very crafty. She knew, the, she knew there was a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and Franti was off the net. You don't want to allow space between you and the net. And that's exactly what she did. It's a tough ball to play. Dietering. Good up there by Minnesota. Looking for another diving get there was Beckley. That one flew out of play. Well, Simone Lee's back up into the front row, and Franti had a nice swing. She got a, she got back in transition, but I almost feel she needs a little bit more time, and I think that's what the coaches are going to talk to her about right now as they take her out, give her a little break, a little breather. Laura Browerman in to serve for Penn State. Will Height. <laughs> that tempo, that ball is going out there fast, and it's really hard to judge if you're watching 
You'll see Sarah Wilhite take that first step as soon as that setter, that ball is in the setter's hands. And look at Washington right there. She's trying to decide, okay, am I going out to the left, left side pin or right side pin? Joust to the net, comes back on Penn State's side. Lee will swing at it. And Gophers can't chase that one down, and the big night for Simone Lee continues. Well, this is much better. The start of the set is much better. They're still they're feeling each other out. The intensity is high. They're both competing well. Not quite so many errors on either side. Penn State's still with three attack errors thus far in the second set. A much more even second set than we saw early on in the first. And a nice roll shot from Wilhite, making number six, her sixth kill of the match. Just being able to capitalize on an out-of-system play like that. I mean, that was a one-point, two-point pass, and she was able to roll shot that right into the court and score for her team. That doesn't happen quite often. Hugh McCutcheon has talked about how Sarah Wilhite has become a complete volleyball player. She's matured. He's loved to watch the evolution of her game, and she's talked about how she came in and put all kinds of pressure on herself as a freshman. Unnecessary pressure. There's another block for the Gophers, making number six. And she's solid out there. Hannah Tapp is not moving. She's a fixture out there on that pin, and it's tough to hit around her. She's got a lot of experience in the middle and the right side. Gophers third in the Big Ten in blocks per set, averaging just under three. That's good for 11th in the nation. Lee flies back onto the Penn State side, but it's out of play. Looked as if it might catch a line, but the point for Lee. Well, amazing. You see Sarah Wilhite get this tip. She's coming from the left side of the court. See how she hustles all the way to the right side and has to get back in order to swing. But in the end, it was Washington taking a big swing. Oh, I'm sorry, that's frantic. My bad. Even. Moment with space to work in the middle on a quick set. Set it space to work with, and that's what the setter does so well. That's why she has so many assists in her column. She's able to put that ball in that sweet spot off the net. She's around the 10 foot line, and this is what this team has been working on. If that pass isn't perfect, she's still pumping the middle. It's an area if they felt like they improved on from Friday night to Sunday of last week. Even though they wanted straight sets against Indiana, Hugh McCutcheon wanted to see a little bit better effort on those passes that maybe aren't perfect. And what do you do right now if you're Minnesota against Simone Lee? Exactly. You want to make sure you release on her because her friend Abby Dietering is setting her. So you want to take that first step with that right foot all the way out and really focus on the ball. She's got some hang time, so you've got to get your timing correct. And with the swing blocking system, that's tough to do, so you've got to make sure you're patient and then press over the net. Also helps out that she sub out, rotate out for the moment. That's a good thing for Minnesota. And a mistake by Penn State. It's 11 to nine lead for Minnesota. Talk about the numbers on Simone Lee. 13 kills for Penn State. The rest of the team has 16 kills. She's getting a workout tonight. Take a moment. Hot tonight in Rec Hall. Seen it throughout the Big Ten. Just some steamy gyms around the conference and usually need a moment we saw for Purdue. They would take the team outside when it got too hot just to give them a breather in between sets. Not maybe the option here at Rec Hall, but any moment to try to cool down, key for both teams. Hart, cross court and down. Whoa, that was fun. <laughs> you just watch her athleticism, and she really opened up strong to her setter, passed up the block, and hit on the inside of that 10-foot line, and strong. Alexis Hart is a freshman. She was the number 16 recruit in the nation, according to PrepVolleyball.com, a three-sport athlete in high school. And we see her athleticism on that last play, and then a mistake by Penn State that opens up an 
continues to open up the largest lead of the second set for the Gophers now at four points. Penn State's got to think they got to make Minnesota play the ball, and that's what worked so well for them in the last part of that set. They gave them the ball. They didn't make the errors. They forced Minnesota to make the errors, and they have to switch gears here right now. Another big swing for Hart. And it comes back down. Paige Tapp thought it was going to fall in, so she touched it, and it's a point to Penn State. And Tori was up there. She read her well. She knew that tempo, that pace. And once you get used to it as a middle blocker, you have to adjust. And good job by that middle blocker for Penn State getting on top of Hart's ball. Tori Goral, a redshirt freshman out of Ontario. But she got a chance to learn a lot last year sitting with that redshirt. It's paid off for this season. Frantic. Overpass, and then a whistle on a net violation on the Gophers. Hugh McCutcheon looking on, not happy. His team had built up a bit of a lead in the second set, but Penn State putting a couple of points together. Oman Washington was there, and then she'll slam that ball down. She was right there. I loved how the setter really pumped her middle right here from way back behind the template line. But Haley Washington was ready for it. And that 50-50 ball coming over the net, just put it right down. Even second set in Happy Valley. We'll come back with more on BTN. Back inside Rec Hall. It's the second set between Minnesota and Penn State. We look at our outside hitter comparison. Will Height, six kills, seven digs for her as well. But Simone Lee, it's kind of hard for anybody to keep up with the way Simone Lee's playing tonight. And I love how she's floating in and out of the backcourt. The coach right now, Russ Rose, is putting her in sometimes to serve, putting her in at different times in the backcourt. And a lot of it has to do with that chemistry, that team energy. Penn State on a 4-0 run of their own to tie it at 13. Kendall White on the service line. Hart with the side out for Minnesota. That is like a first tempo ball. And Alexis Hart, former middle attacker for her club team and her high school, so she knows what it takes to get that first step in when that setter has the ball, and it is fast. You cannot defend that unless you are right in front of her from the start of the play. Overpass at the net. This will be a whistle against Penn State in the violation. It's hard to do as a setter. You want to reach for that over the net, but you have to really tell yourself it's not worth it because you will get called no matter what. So you kind of have to come down and play some defense around it. Tough serve the ace for the Gophers. Their third of the match. And out of the timeout strong. They're coming out with a plan. What are we going to do against Penn State? And again, this is their game, rhythm. They wear them down. They're going to wear the other team down. They can't get in system, and they're into the net from Simone Lee. And a rare mistake from her, but when the serving continues to be tough, that's going to result in a timeout. Right, and so you have Simone Lee there in there to pass, but also Allie Franti, two outside hitters, not traditionally known to play next to each other, and that's what's going to happen. 4-0 run by Penn State, followed by a 4-0 run by the Gophers. They're up 17-13 in the second set. Back in University Park, Pennsylvania, Ohio State. What a week for them. You see the player of the week and the defensive player of the week because the Buckeyes knocked off the Cornhuskers and ended up their unbeaten start to the season. It was their first road win against a number one team in school history. But that's no surprise for Ohio State. They've now defeated Nebraska on the road in the Devaney Center in their last three trips. <laughs> Pretty amazing, right? Not many people can say they've done that. But these two were superstars for that match. They had a game plan and stuck with it. And the grit that that team showed in that environment is amazing. And it gave other teams across the country hope. Washington. 
Right out of the gate, nice pass, delivered a ball. Perfect ball to Haley Washington, nice and high so she can really stroke it and find the court. Six kills on seven swings for Haley Washington. You look at that big number at 857. One of the nation's best in hitting percentage. That one out of play on a service air though. And out of the timeout, that's not what Penn State wanted to see. They get the point from Washington, then a service air, and Minnesota creeping up on a 25 point mark for the second set. Nobody wants to see that out of timeout. The number one rule of volleyball, don't make a serving <laughs> air out of the timeout. Four airs for Penn State in the service line. None for Minnesota, but Simone Lee out of the back row. And I guess that answers my question why she's back there. And three point pass, and the setter decides to go in the backcourt against a one on one opportunity. Goes straight on, but if you see her turn her wrist, thumb up to thumb down, cross court shot. 14th match this season that she has been in double figures. She's now got 14 kills. That line would be good for an entire match, and she's got it almost midway through the second set. Lee. Page tap converts. Finds the line. Nobody around that area at all. Down the line off of a slide attack is tough to do against a big block. Hard to believe that for Paige Tapp and Hannah Tapp, they're now in their senior seasons. We've been talking about them for a long time, Mike. We've been talking about them for a long time, but still, their freshman year to their senior year seem to go by quite quickly. Great accomplishment a year ago, both of them being All-Americans, but there's Washington. So difficult to stop that play from Penn State, Haley Washington. I love her reaction after she hits every ball. She takes a lot of energy right here, goes up hard, swings through. Look at that celebration. And it's out. There's Lee once again, buries the ball down. Nice execution on Penn State. And Minnesota has some good rhythm too. But that was a great dig in the backcourt by Franti. So they were able to find Lee. And again, just, just executing off that first ball coming over the net is huge. Simone Lee taking full advantage of a bigger role this year. And Sarah Wilhite doing the same. Just taking a two step. She makes it look so easy, and she's out there on an island. I'm surprised Penn State has left her alone out there. She saw the line wide open, and she probably heard about that from her teammates. Seven kills and seven digs now for Sarah Wilhelm. She's got three double-doubles on the season, looking for another one tonight. Lee with the roll shot. Wilhelm has another. Can't leave her alone at all. You give her the line, she'll take it. You give her the seam, she'll take it. But she's in there to dig, big transition off the net. She finds it, looks at the open court and takes it. And that is why she's strong, she's a leader on that team. 21 to 17 lead for Minnesota in the second set, a timeout for Penn State. Will Height, the senior out of Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Mentioned that she's taken on a bigger role this year. Mentioned Dolly Santana, departure to graduation, so Will Height had to step up. She was third in the team in kills a year ago, but Coach Hugh McCutcheon talked to us about the evolution of her competitive game, what she's done over the course of her time to be a little bit more aggressive, be a more of a competitor out there, and it's paid off. Well, we know she can hit, but it, it's all the other things that completes her, and that's her serving game defensively. We talked about how many digs she's had tonight, but also her leadership on the court. She's a go-to go player, and as a setter, you need somebody like that on the court who's, who you trust, who in these situations, down one set, who's gonna get the ball? And chances are, Penn State coming out of this, they're talking about it right now. We're gonna key up on Sarah Wilhite, we're gonna make sure we have four hands on her, and we're gonna dig everyone else. What a remarkable difference for her, because if you remember, you and I covered her matches when she was a freshman and a sophomore. Some nights she'd go off, sometimes she'd disappear. And to be this consistent threat they can now count on really is a 
big feather in her hat for what she's done over the course of her time. It is, and Santana's gone, so I'm sure they were all looking at her like, okay, it's your turn now. Look at the Big Ten standings coming into our match tonight. Minnesota and Penn State 4-0 in Big Ten play alongside Wisconsin. Nebraska dropping their first match of the year to Ohio State. But one of these two teams is going to stay tied atop the standings if Wisconsin can win their match tonight. The other one's going to fall. You look at the Big Ten a year ago, it was two losses for Minnesota, and that earned them the Big Ten title. So one or two losses again could be the record. So this match could play a big factor into the Big Ten title race at the end of the year, and Simone Lee, if she keeps playing like this, Penn State's going to be in it all year long. The big factor is being able to deliver a ball to her like that, and that was perfect for her. It hung up in the air just ever so slightly so she can go up and get it. And you cannot trap your hitters against Minnesota, and that, that was a perfect set for her. A service error. Penn State keeps on creeping back up in the second set and then gives away a point and a service error. You can't do that against Minnesota, especially right now. They're very loose. You notice in that timeout, they were uh, very comfortable. Dietering with the center, feeling off the block. She goes up strong, finds that right side pin, and they're going to go after Alexis Hart up there. She is a low blocks per set percentage for her team as a freshman. It's tough to learn how to block on that left side pin as a freshman in college. Blocking is a whole different ball game when you up the ante and get out of the club season. So you want to attack that right side pin. Lobin again for Minnesota. And the Gophers two points away from taking the second set. Six kills, hitting 600 for Lobin. She's had a couple air-free matches this year. That one against Indiana. Nine kills on nine attacks just this past week. Franti. First set was decided in extra points, 29-27. Penn State's going to have to go on a run, and it's going to have to come from the service line. It's going to have to come now. Kendall White, the freshman serve. Will Height out of the back row. Set point for the Gophers upcoming. And who are you going to find? Number eight, of course. Sarah Will Height out of that Northern Lights club team in Minnesota, where we've seen so many Gophers of the, out over the years come to this program. Washington. Off the block and another kill for her, but Penn State in trouble in the second set. You gotta find a couple players up here who are air free. We got Washington and Loman on the other side. Keaton Holcomb back in for Penn State. That libero from a year ago. Selger Swenson, Hart, the tip, and Minnesota evens up the match at one set apiece. I love it here how Samantha finds Alexis Hart. Nice fast tempo, one-on-one -on -one opportunity again. Haley Washington just sitting and waiting for the setter. I'd like to see her release in the next set. But Minnesota knows how to get it done. They weren't going to do what they did in the first set, and they attacked and capitalized. We're joined now by Russ Rose of the Penn State Nittany Lions. And coach, you won the first set after coming back from a big deficit, but you had some issues in serve receive. What adjustments will you make in the third set in that area? Well, I mean, Minnesota does a great job keeping the ball in play is, I think, one of their great strengths. and. Uh, you know, I don't think they didn't. I don't think they did anything we didn't expect. But uh, a couple of our people weren't in the right spots. You know, when they when they go to Will Hyde on the pipe, you got to make a play. So between the three miss serves and the three net violations, you're you're not going to win games when you make those sort of errors. So, you know, I'm not sure it's making adjustments as much as uh, 
you know, I, I think they're having as much of a time stopping Haley and Simone as, uh, as we seem to be stopping them out of the middle when they pass well. So, you know, we're going to have to see. When we had uh, service pressure in the first game, I thought we had a little better uh, flow to what we were doing, and we'll see if we can uh, pick that up again in the third. Well, thank you, Coach, and good luck in the rest of the match. Thank you. Tied at one set apiece between Minnesota and Penn State. We've had a good one so far. We'll come back with highlights and stats when we return here at intermission. Start of the third set between Penn State and Minnesota, and there is Simone Lee with her 16 kills, hitting over 400. She is seven kills away from tying a career high, and we still have at least two more sets to play. She has been brilliant tonight, so has Sarah Wilhite. And credit to both setters. Both setters have done a nice job after a slow start for Abby Dietering for Penn State. She's really set this offense a lot better and gotten the ball to Simone Lee, often without letting the Minnesota block totally key in on her. Well, it's a big match for Abby Dietering in her home court, and she's fairly new. She's new to this program, so I think the jitters were there in the beginning. And Samantha Seliger Swenson, of course, has gotten great balance and found Will Height throughout, but. Always impressed with her efforts for the Gophers, and the first point of the third goes to Minnesota. Hannah Tapp, five kills now for her on the night. And Tapp, third in the Big Ten Conference in hitting percentage, 15th in kills per set. Had a phenomenal weekend last weekend with 21 kills and hit 500 in those two matches. Here's Lee again. Rosado with the up, but it comes back over. Dietering didn't get much on that ball. Easy for the Gophers. That one clips off the net. Extended rally here early in set three. Diving was Rosado to get that ball, and then we'll have a whistle on Minnesota. Well, both times, Rosado is ready and waiting for Dietering's attack. I would suggest to Abby is just to mix it up a little bit. Same thing with Samantha. Show yourself as an attacker, but find different ranges, different parts on the court where you can swing. Tough serve from Penn State, but it doesn't matter. Another one-handed set on the quick to Loman. Perfect pass all the way up to Samantha, and she's there. She's got fast feet up to the net from her release position and that separates average setters from great setters being able to release from the backcourt and getting up to the net. Long run for Dietering, roll shot from Lee. Ball punched up in the air and then set over a free ball chance for Penn State. There's a libero again for the Nittany Lions and Kendall White. She likes to attack. That's something new I found out about her. <laughs> right, exactly. She sees that open court and she's going for it. So a kill for Kendall White. That's her third of the season. And the question was whether or not Rosado got that up on that pancake. Service error. Fifth service error now for Penn State. Minnesota does not have air yet. They've done a really nice job of serving, especially this whole non-conference and start of conference. Something they've been working hard on. Workers are fifth in the Big Ten in service aces. That doesn't tell the entire serving story, but an indication of how good they are from the line. Here's Thielen. Then a whistle on a net violation. There's another air there by Minnesota. Sometimes you get a little antsy up at the net. You see Alexis Hart right here. She gets her arms over. She's on the way down. Clips it. H tap. Washington will get another whistle on a net violation. Setter on Minnesota really forced it all the way to that back pin. Sometimes you don't need to do that. You can just go for it and put it up to the left side pin. So it does not go down as a net violation. It is a kill for Haley Washington. Nine 
kills now for Washington on 10 airless swings. play on Minnesota's part and Alexa shows it she's not giving anything away she shows she's hitting cross court Sophie Beckley the sophomore out of Seattle Washington with that last dig for Minnesota taking on a bigger role here in the last six matches there she is again and that one will not stay in play kind of tough to defend that swing well and we don't have the pursuit rule anymore uh, to go for, even go for that ball and she's got that line opportunity open there's somebody waiting for her but if you put some heat on the ball with a little bit of top spin it's tough to dig that ball up in play eight kills now for Allie Franti and state with the 5-4 lead in the third Will Height, and then Kendall White slipped. He's going to try to kick that ball up, but couldn't get any contact. Which is legal. <laughs> you can kick it. Come in fast for that gap play. Sarah Will Height showing off her athleticism. She's an outside hitter, usually a second tempo ball, and that was a first tempo ball. Will Height now to double figures for the 12th time this season. Franti. Continues to swing down the line, comes back over, and then Washington cleans it up. She does, she's a cleaner. She's up there at the net. Big physical presence. Big line swing again by Franti. And she's up there waiting to go. Ten kills now for Haley Washington. Joining Simone Lee in double figures for the Nittany Lions. Broerman back in to serve. Will Height. Not much put up against her that time. Nothing at all. And Washington was starting to go to her left hand side and left Will Height alone for the setter. And that is a no no in this match for that first Temple ball. And a three point pass. That's why Samantha Seliger Swenson's so good. You just don't know where she's going to set. I've seen that a couple of times from Haley Washington. You're going up against a very good setter, but what can Washington work on? Well, she needs to make sure she's releasing, maybe shade over a bit. Um, but honestly, I don't know what their game plan is. Maybe on a three-point pass, Haley Washington was told to go to the slide or the first tempo ball and not the second. So we don't have all the information, but you know, when Will Height is up there, I would shade and then go in fast. Haley Washington came in as a freshman before she joined the Nittany Lions. She saw Salima Rockwell, the Penn State assistant coach, at a club tournament and said, teach me how to block. Didn't quite feel like she had that much of an instruction, or at least at the level she needed to be coming out of high school. But she has made a big leap in that area, and also in her serving game, and she has one ace already, almost had another. Lee again! Sharp cross court, and if you notice, Will Height and Rosado were lined up defensively, almost getting in each other's way. The ball is moving so fast, you've got to make sure that you're staggered defensively, that you're not hiding behind somebody. So Olga Swenson setting over to Will Height for another kill. Samantha does such a nice job of pumping her middles, but look at Loman playing it back just so it gives her team another opportunity to get a swing. Great job by both the setter and the middle attacker. Great look at the Minnesota setter and Seliger Swenson in that last sequence. There she is from the 10 foot line. That all goes down for an attack. Just placing the ball in front defensively. You do not want to be back on your heels. You want to make sure your shoulders are over, almost over your knees, so you're able to take that first step going forward. If you catch yourself on your heels, you're not going to be able to get those attacks in front of you. Former 
Comes back over on Penn State side. Here's Lee. And a whistle on a net violation on Minnesota. A lot of net violations in this set. And it could be just you're anxious. The set could be a little bit tighter. The tempo could be there. There's a lot of reasons why you go into the net. And basically, it comes down to body control. Gophers out of system off the serve, and that one will be out of play. So Penn State with the 10-8 lead. And Dietering again doing some work with her serve. Taking advantage of the opportunity off of a great serve. Capitalizing on those points. And Hart comes back for the Gophers. The hate time we were talking about with her. She's up there in the air, and she catches those blockers off guard. So she was tipping when the blockers were coming down. Hart now with six kills, also has five airs. She's not been in double figures this year in Big Ten play, but that's only a matter of time. <laughs> She's got a great career ahead of her. Overpass and an easy kill for Loman and the Gophers. Trading points. Unfortunately, they're errors. And serve receive problems again for Penn State. Serve receive problems, right? The opportunities for Minnesota where they're tough on that serving line. We've seen Daliana's Rosado been tough throughout the night. This one does get to Dietering and Lee the side out for Penn State. Making kill number 19 for her. In that rotation, she's on the right side of the court, not her natural swing. But she's ready and waiting for it. She comes on the inside as a righty. You see right-handers take your spike approach inside the court. Left-handers, you take them outside the court. Simone Lee talked about earlier this year how this junior class for Penn State that was ranked the number one overall recruiting class in the nation needed to prove they were worthy of that ranking this year. It's their time to step up and take over this team. She has certainly done that. Block for Minnesota, waiting on it, and an easy one for them. We're tied at 11. It does. It looks so easy, doesn't it, Mike? And they're standing there. They're physical. They've got that body control back on an on, on off shot by Franti. You just want to make sure it goes straight down so there's no potential for them to play that ball up. Roman has two aces already. She goes after Allie Franti. Feeling the attack, and that one will catch the back corner. I love it when teams play deep along the perimeter. I think uh, teams like Penn State and Minnesota, they struggle when it becomes a 10-foot game. So if you're able to hit deep, back into those corners along the perimeters, the whole game opens up for them. White diving for that one. The joust is won, but out of play. Last touched off Penn State. Physical. Very physical up there. I think Washington's going to gonna have that one, but she's facing outside the court. Tenth tie of the third set. It's really been a tight match ever since Penn State made the comeback in set one. Washington. Minnesota somehow kept that in play. Free ball comes over. Remarkable effort by the Gophers. Will Height, though, looking for a touch. She doesn't have it. Minnesota won't get the point. But impressive effort by the Gophers. Great heads up play by Minnesota. Just keeping the ball alive, shoving those arms anywhere it takes to keep that ball going. But here you see long swing by Will Height. Penn State was able to win that long rally, and, and down the stretch, Mike, that's where it's going to matter. Long service error there from Keaton Holcomb. You see me shaking my head right now. <laughs> It's too bad because once you start getting the ball rolling, a pure air happens and you, you kind of take a step back. It's 
been a large number of service errors for Penn State with six, but equally, look at the impressive effort by Minnesota with no service errors. Typically in the Big Ten, you see an aggressive team. They'll make some errors, and you accept that as Holcomb was diving into the crowd to try to get that ball. But Minnesota has been clean from the service line, had some errors towards the end of the first set, but they're hitting 318 here in the third. Penn State, on the other hand, hitting 391 in the third set. And it's not because they don't practice it. You know, every day they practice serving. It's just who has the most focus at that time. And Minnesota is able to go long distances with that focus. Russ Rose getting a clarification from the down official. There is no replay tonight. Not every Big Ten venue has a challenge review system. Minnesota, Nebraska, and Wisconsin do. We'll see some other programs at it, but it is not every night. And there's another ace for the Gophers. Make it their fourth. They make them pay. You take your eye off the ball, and that's what happens. It's the first run by either team of this third set, and Minnesota with the two-point lead in the third on the road. Back in Rec Hall, we take a look at a few more weekly awards. That includes a couple of Gophers, Samantha Seliger Swenson, the setter of the week. That's her fourth award of the season in that category. Alexis Hart, third time she has been freshman of the week. And Hugh McCutcheon said that one of the goals for Samantha Seliger Swenson was to be a better all-around player. She has shown that tonight. She has. She's finding her go-to hitters, not only Sarah Wilhite, but Alexis Hart. You see her pump in the middle and pumping the right side of the court. But she can get it done defensively, too. And, and she's really come a long way just in a short year. Double-double for Samantha Seliger-Swenson. 30 assists and 11 digs. Dietering Lee out of the back row. Will Height looked like that was going to fall, but a great get by Holcomb. And then a net violation on Minnesota. Credit to Keaton Holcomb for keeping that alive. Huge credit. She's in there for a reason, and that's to back up her hitters, not only to talk to them, but to cover. And you'll see her leaning over. She takes a back step, but able to react. And the best defensive players can react that fast. And a tap on the slide play. She goes on that inside and hits cross court. Her back is almost to the bench. So she puts a lot of heat on that ball. Six kills now for Hannah Tapp. And here is Samantha Seliger Swenson to serve for the Gophers. Dietery has to go with her own attack off that pass. Another big swing. Holcomb again the dig. That kill will go down for Simone Lee, but part of the credit, you got to give something to Keaton Holcomb. No, you're going to give it all to the <laughs> defensive player right here. Look at her getting down and low, very gritty. And Simone Lee answers, but two in a row, mustering up those points for her team. Another 20 kill performance for Simone Lee. She had 23 against North Carolina, which was a season high. Will Height make it 14 for her. Your girl up there, again, getting a little faked out by the setter. She's moving to her left and leaving Will Height alone. Lee. Rosado, that one comes over onto Penn State side. Another chance for Simone Lee. That one is long. No touch call, so an air. Another rare air there from Simone Lee. And Rosado was there in the first ball that Simone Lee hit. Rosado did not have to take a step at all. So it's up to Lee. She's trying to turn it around, make some, make some points, make Rosado move, and she just ended up making an air. 6-2 run by Minnesota, and the run continues on the stuff for Lohman. I'm sure they're happy about that one. It's taken them this amount of time to block her. Great move by Ad Abby, getting her hands up. And Lohman's on top of it. Fifth block of the night for Molly Lohman. She's now leading this team in blocks this season with 60. 
you think of the Tap Sisters, and usually there's not much discussion about Molly Lohman, but she led this team in blocks a year ago with 163 blocks. She's currently ninth in the Big Ten in blocks per set. She's having a great match tonight. Nine kills and five blocks hitting 600. That brings us now to our State Farm State of Success in the Big Ten Conference. You look around and there's so many great venues. This one here at Rec Hall being one of them. Minnesota in the Sports Pavilion as well. And then UW Fieldhouse. And of course, the Bob Devaney Center in Nebraska, averaging over 8,000 fans. But this is the best conference in terms of results, but also the best conference in terms of fans. No better venues you'll find throughout the nation. There are some good ones at other conferences, but not the plethora of great volleyball home fan bases as you see in the Big Ten. That's a good word for it, plethora. I like that. <laughs> And it's true, it's hard to walk into these big time programs and compete unless you're used to it. And so we always talk about the freshmen and, and what it's like at, at these venues. Um, but we also talk about the seniors and maybe the last time that they are playing at these venues and they wanna leave a legacy. Sarah Wilhite wants to leave a legacy here at Rec Hall. She wants to know that she was able to do the most for her team and come out with a W and that's what she's gonna remember which no one on her team has done since 2004 in Rec Hall for Minnesota. And an update, Wisconsin did defeat Rutgers. They are 5-0. So will it be Minnesota or Penn State who joins them at that mark? Gophers looking like they're in the driver's seat here in the third. Dietering, though, with another kill. I call that the donut right there in the middle. <laughs> Uh, we work out that we work on that at lower levels in the volleyball game, and it oftentimes is open. And you've got to make sure you're talking about it, coming right out of the timeout. Four kills now for Abby Dietering. Penn State setter block is there for Penn State, but Gophers will have another shot. This time, though, they won't get it past Simone Lee. I think it's a little payback, I'm sure, for her. Battling up at the net. You see Thielen up there, getting her hands over. And then on the other side, Lee. Timeout with Penn State trying to come back here in the third. They trail it by two. We will come back to the conclusion of the third set when we return on BTN. Well, there's nine teams right <laughs> in the top 25. That will do it. But with so many good teams in the top three, Top four now with the change in the schedule and the standings, I mean. Thielen. Swing from Goro, who puts it away for Penn State. And she's going unnoticed up there, but she's working extremely hard on that first ball before this action. We saw get up and be physical, and then she hits that overpass. Ball clips off the net. Feeling down the line, and we're tied again. With authority. Telling her teammates, that's what I've got. 12th tie of the third. 4-0 run by Penn State. Coming back hard, got the antenna. And it's a Penn State lead. It's a tough one for Minnesota. Real tight pass for the setter to handle. And when it's tight, a lot of times that ball is going to be tight. So as an attacker, you've got to do something with it. Tap it back into the block and play it up, or find a way to tip or roll shot. Keep it in play. Penn State, we get another look at that last point off the hard swing. Saw the antenna move. Yeah, and it's tough. She had a little space to work with, but that is coming really tight and trying to find Thielen's hands. She's very smart up there for such a newcomer. Penn State fans enjoying this third set as they're now leading it. You look again at the outside hitters. And 20 kill effort for Simone Lee, but a double-double for Sarah Wilhite. That's her fourth double-double of the season. Great hitting percentage numbers as well. And I'm just looking at Lowman too. Nine kills, no errors. How about Haley Washington? Ten kills, no errors. We have a lot of people to talk about, Mike. There's a great 
talent on both sides of the net. So much fun to watch. And as we said, this is potentially one of those matches that you could think of previewing for the final weekend of the season. And it seems like we have that so often because you have Wisconsin that's a team that can go after a national championship. The defending national champions in the Cornhuskers and this Minnesota team that played in the national semifinals a year ago. And of course, Penn State, a fixture in championship matches and national semifinals. It's so much fun, night in, night out, the Big Ten. Great talent. And that's why the Big Ten Network, it's so important that we televise these because it's so important for those young girls out there to watch quality volleyball and dream big. That's a good sales pitch, Liz. It is. Penn State with the one-point lead in the third. Who is going to take the lead, head into the fourth set. Hart recovers. Good bounce back by her. It goes right back to her, right? Three-point pass, delivering the ball to Hart. Nice and high. Look at Lohman up there challenging Goral. So Goral's up there and takes away that opportunity to go out and block Hart. Race to five points. Lee off the block. Very intentional and deliberate for these attackers. They see that block, they see the hands. She knows exactly what she's doing. Swing away, wrist away. Finds that outside hand. Russ Rose has said that Simone Lee has been the most consistent player this year. and Really gave her a lot of credit for her fitness this year. She's bounced back, played a lot of tough matches, long matches where she's been depended on for all these swings, and yet she still comes through. Hart again for the Gophers. It's fast. If anything, I would put two up there against her. Line up inside. Give her a little bit line because that set is an inside set. That's almost like a 32, what we call it in volleyball. It's in the three zone, two tempo. And she's coming in fast and hard. And a problem in serve receive from Penn State, the ace for the Gophers. And this is where they run into problems. You get to 20 points, you want to make sure that you're up your game. And this is where Minnesota has the advantage. They know how to up it. They know how to bring their intensity and their competitiveness there. It helps being efficient. Great serve, really going after that cluster of athletes in that corner. And they're going after Simone Lee. How about Molly Lohman, though? She came into this match with three aces on the year. She's got three aces tonight. And you talked about her line earlier with her nine kills, zero air. She's hitting 529, three aces, five blocks. She's getting points for the Gophers all different kinds of ways. She's doing it right now. And it goes to show, Mike, it's not always the hitting um, you know, that stands out. It stands out easily to you and I and the fans out there. But you look on the stat sheet, and and all the little things, and it's timing. It's the timing that matters. Another tight set here in the third. We talked about how good this series has been last year on September 26th in this building. Penn State took a 2-0 lead, but then Minnesota battled back. However, the Nittany Lions would win it in five sets. Haley Washington had 13 kills. Franti had 13 as well. Megan Courtney with a big night for Penn State, and they would win in five. But then they would meet once more in Minneapolis, and it was a sweep for the Gophers in November of last year. And that was their first win over Penn State since November of 2010. That was the first time that anybody swept Penn State since 2011. And the whole country went, oh, wow. <laughs> well, Penn State has been swept a couple more times, though, after that, three times since losing to Minnesota. Not going to be a sweep tonight, not part of the conversation, but interesting how Minnesota did end that run of success by Penn State last year in the sports pavilion. A couple of changes for the Gophers as Erica Hanley gets out there as well as Maddie Beal. Maddie Beal is out there as a blocking uh, sub. She does a nice job, very solid and physical up at the net. Beal and no. Still puts it away. And they're going away from her. So smart play for Penn State. They realize Maddie Beal's up there for a reason. And they go behind. Double figures now for Heidi Thielen. 10 kills hitting 350.
Hines, one off her career high. Tied again in the third set. We have gone back and forth throughout this entire set. And the block! Thielen combining with Haley Washington. The ability to do two things well in a row. She can swing and she can block. Look at those hands turn in, and that is a middle blocker move right there. Third block now for Thielen. Short serve just at the 10-foot line, and then here's Paige Tapp. They'll probably go back and say, maybe we shouldn't serve short. <laughs> Their ball control is excellent. That was an easy serve for their back row to handle. 16 ties, five lead changes in the third. And Alexis Hart now serving for the Gophers. Crucial moment in this match, and a block will give Minnesota set point. A little bit of hang time by Franchi. She's up there early, but decided to swing late. If you notice, she's up there and swings on the way down. So just a little early for her. Great block by Minnesota. We went to extra points in the first set. It was decided 29-27. Are we headed there again? Are the Gophers going to end it here? They're going to have a chance. Rosado sets Will Height. It goes off the head of Dieterin, and the Gophers go up 2-1 on Penn State. Great defense by Minnesota, and it started in the beginning of this set with tons of blocks. They had some airs along the way, but they ended strong. Again, from 20 points on, they're very efficient. Both teams efficient in the third set. We had a great one. We'll come back with the fourth set when we return. Minnesota pumped up. We've got a good one in Happy Valley as we start the fourth set between Minnesota and Penn State. Gophers with the 2-1 lead, but the way that third set played out, you can easily see this one going five. Number one team in the nation in Minnesota, and the Gophers number one for the first time in 12 years. We talked to Hugh McCutcheon about what it means to be the number one team, and he said, well, we don't really think about it that much. They're validated a little bit, but they're focused on what they need to do. They're going to choose to define who they are and not worry about someone else, the coaches, Paul, or anybody else around the nation telling them who they are. And that worked out for them last year as they did define their own legacy for last season, winning a Big Ten title for the first time since 2002, going on to the national semifinal, and Coach McCutcheon saying that Minnesota, they got a little taste of that success, and they want more, and they're going to go after more this year. And they've been on a mission for quite some time. Uh, back a couple years ago, they decided they wanted to up their game, and they did last year, and, and he was surprised how much they worked this past offseason. Look at how even those hitting percentages were. Tied at 275 through three sets. Will Hunt. Francie the up. Washington just had to get a piece of it. And then Tap saw the back corner was open. So smart, and that's exactly what I wanted Washington to do. Instead of just tip it in front of the 10 foot line, Push it all the way back. That backcourt is way open. Once you start bringing everyone in defensively, it leaves those holes behind you. There is the first service error of the match for Minnesota. Talked often about the service errors for Penn State. They have six tonight. Minnesota has been clean from the service line until that moment. Washington started the match tonight with an ace. Another big swing from Hannah Tepp. Double quick right there. You had Loman going up in the front, and then you see Hannah Tepp going behind. Who do you block, Mike? So you, you got a lot of options up there, and that's what makes them so offensive and a huge threat. Both teams have four different players with eight kills or more, and leading all of them is Simone Lee with 22. And she's their answer to those. And so they'll they'll fight back. They they will will themselves to get that next kill and not hang their head. In the sport of volleyball, you cannot spend too much time dwelling on the past. Loman keeps her perfect night going. And she's available. The great thing about her is that she transitions well. 
Gives herself space away from the net, but spacing away from the setter. So she's able to hit cross court and cross body at the same time. Season high 10 kills from Molly Lohman. Lee on the right, stuff straight down. You heard that, boom. That did go straight down. Excellent block. Got a chance to hear it again there. And nine blocks now for Minnesota. Loman has six of them and issues again. Who's going to take the ball? Penn State having trouble. And they're calling zones from the bench, so they've done a nice job of scouting their opponents both sides. And Rosado's looking at the bench right now, and they're telling her what zones, who to serve, which way to move, are you making her move to the left or to the right? They know every tendency. Another tough one from Rosado and Lee trying to roll that cross court out of play. Too many out of system plays right now, and it starts from the passing. Their first contact with Simone Lee in there, passing, and some communication breakdown. It's a recipe for not a disaster, but a couple points for the other team. Time a good pass. Great pursuit again by Minnesota. They have been pursuing the ball all night. Lee blocked once more. Great effort here. Nice dig. Look at Samantha really chase down this ball. Free ball opportunity for Penn State, but wasn't able to capitalize because of releasing on Simone. They know exactly where that setter is going, and you cannot be complacent as a setter. You have to always think of yourself as a threat. Gophers on a 5-0 run. We'll come back to Happy Valley. Back in the fourth set between number one Minnesota and number 15 Penn State. Gophers came into the night. Hugh McCutcheon said that the key to the match would be first contact. They've been a lot better in first contacts this evening than Penn State. Good pass this time. Good recovery there. Franti got to that ball, and that one tipped at the net. Snyder Swenson with the up. Bump set goes over to Hart. Overpass. Goro flies in. What a play by the redshirt freshman. And that's a team sport right there. When somebody is screwing up in the backcourt, whether it's ball control or whatnot, you have Goral up in the front court helping her teammates out. Tori Goral has talked about wanting to be a feared middle at some point for Penn State. Make plays like that, you'll get closer to being one of those feared middles someone that teams have to game plan for. Hart solo blocked by Thielen. Exclamation point. Wow. Very solid play. You notice Samantha digs down, gives that fast tempo ball, but Thielen, again, did not have to move one way or the other. She was right in front. Fourth block tonight for Thielen. Loman. Tip from Thielen. Hart makes the play. Three ball chance, though, for Penn State. Dietering goes back to Thielen, punches it over towards the back corner. Lane out was Kendall White. And running up towards the net, double contact is going to be called on Samantha Selinger Swenson. But go back to that play by Kendall White, the Penn State LeBaron. Let's see this transpire. You got Rosado pulling it up, Hart with a heads up move. And unfortunately, that pass was a little too tight for Samantha to handle, but Penn State hung in there defensively. Oh. Tap. See Brianna Weiskircher back in for Penn State. Serving the Alexa, Alexis Hart. Putting it down. It really, I, I'm looking at the middle blocker for Penn State, Goral, and who do you go with? I mean, it's such a fast tempo, and if you're passing efficiently like they are, especially off of a free ball or an easy shot, you really don't know. You've got to give it your best effort and hope that your defense 
does the job. Branty. She will get a touch. So the point to Penn State, Allie Branty. Now with her 10th kill, fourth Nittany Lion. Excuse me, that's nine kills. Stats showing us that she's got nine kills on the night. Now finally updated to 10. Our stat showing a little bit of a different tally back and forth, but 10 kills for Franti. And double contact again on the Gophers. Five one run for Penn State. Your eyes are completely drawn to the net in this match, but Folks, take a look at the backcourt and the defensive plays that are happening on both sides. Page tap. That one does not touch an Indy Lion, and we're tied. The ability to take a full approach and spread things out really matters. And a tight ball, she passed up the set, so it's hard to readjust and turn it back in. Hart. Leahy has the up, but it comes back over on Minnesota's side. Second chance for Hart. Three ball for the Gophers. They go back to the freshman. Third time she terminates. She is so impressive right now. And she has the energy to, to hit like that. Time in and time again. She's swinging hard. She had a little bit of an off speed there into the block, but look at this last play. Turns it back down the line, knew exactly she wanted to get that touch. Double figures and kills for Hart for the first time in Big Ten play, and she will head back to serve. Overpass, fortunate for Penn State. They kept that alive. Will Height is blocked. She didn't get a concussion in that first play, if you <laughs> notice. She almost bounced it off her head, but got right back into the play and was able to deliver. Looked like Minnesota was about to take control in the fourth set, then a run by Penn State. Feels like we're back to playing even volleyball. Franti gets that ball down. This is a perimeter, and she's getting a lot of support from her teammates right now, and that's what she needs, confidence. Well, there's a lot of questions about Allie Franti there. During the non-conference season, she hit 154, struggled, was inconsistent. During Big Ten play, she's hitting 350 coming into tonight. Not the best hitting percentage, but getting her numbers and getting the kills up there, which has not always been the case this year. Lee out of the back row. And if you have somebody like Simone Lee on the court, Allie Franti does not need to be perfect. She needs to make sure she takes care of the ball, and Simone Lee will have those high-hitting percentages that you talked about. 9-2 run for Penn State, and they're on top 11-9 in the fourth set. Penn State on a 9-2 run here in the fourth set to take the 11-9 lead over Minnesota. And you can look at what they've done on this run. Well, watch Alexis Hart. She comes in strong, but look at the block on the other side of the net. Double, double block over there. Sometimes a single block, but Simone Lee finds it high into the court. Great job by Simone Lee. Simone Lee is now tied a career high with 23 kills, matching her performance of a double-double she had against North Carolina. That was in Penn State's first loss of the season. Page tap with authority. Deliver it, too. She keeps the ball in front of her. She knew exactly wanted, where she wanted to attack the ball. Perfect pass comes in right behind the setter and cut away with the wrist. Hard to do. Very athletic move. Francis, the tip. And a great pancake by Minnesota. 
Bobcats want that ball to be called down, but Washington will make sure it's Penn State's point. And that's where you need to keep playing, even when you hear the fans, you know, disagree maybe with a call or a non-call. You have to keep playing. Again, no replay tonight, but it didn't matter because Washington still got that point. Looks, though, from our view that that ball was down. It did look from our view. It was down. But this is what they train for, too, in practices. A lot of times coaches will give their teams bad calls just to see how they react. Salander Swenson with her own attack that time. That's her first kill of the night. Her counterpart, Abby Dietering, has four kills. for Penn State in the fourth. Penn State took set one and extra points, 29-27. Minnesota, the second set, 25-21, and the third, 25-23. Washington adds to her total. No errors for Washington. You've got to find her on the court. You've got to give her teammates a little break and find the hot hitter. Speed. Here's Seliger Swenson. And a tap down the line. That was a great set by Samantha in that shoe. Showed her athletic ability. As a setter, she turns and sets to her side to Hannah Tapp. And she is a risk taker. And that what's, that's what separates her right now. Sloan Lee gets the hit hands. Both teams trading back and forth. Lee now with her new career high of 24 kills. More important though to her is winning this fourth set and keeping this match going rather than her overall total. Overpass. A violation on Minnesota as Penn State opens up a three-point lead. As a setter, you have to argue that to the, to the up official. If it's above the net, it's fair game for the blocker on the other side to go for it. There's the field. She wants a touch call, she'll get it. Initially, it didn't look like it. And Minnesota not happy with that last call. Thielen goes in strong. You have low men. Her right hand was in question whether or not she got it. Tough to tell. Does the ball change direction when it comes past her hand? Again, no replay tonight. It's not in every Big Ten venue. Good look there. It would appear that there was a touch. It's a great look, and it could be just her pinky or of her right hand. Oftentimes, I look at the reaction of the players. Sometimes they give it away. Liz, it's so tough for teams to come on the road and win in rec hall. You knew it was not going to be easy, even though Minnesota's the number one team in the nation. And Penn State trying to force a decisive fifth set as they're up by four in the fourth. Saturday on BTN, it's a doubleheader on the gridiron. First at noon, Penn State hosts Maryland. Then at 3.30, Purdue takes on Illinois. Coverage starts Saturday at noon on BTN and streaming live on BTN to go. This Penn State team has just had 10 losses total here at Rec Hall in 11 years. Now, one of them was this year. They had two last season. They're trying to avoid having a second one tonight. Minnesota has not beaten the Nittany Lions in rec hall since October of 2004, which also happened to be the last time they were ranked number one. They all know how to win, <laughs> especially at this level. They all come from winning programs themselves, whether it's their club or their high school, and they transfer it right away into these top-level programs. So winning is not the problem. They're knowing how to win. It's just figuring it out faster. Let's see if Minnesota, out of the timeout, can go on a run of their own. 
Ball just comes over and out of play. Tough serving from Penn State. Great opportunity for Penn State. She really created that point for her team, and that's what tough serving can do. Dietering again, making things happen. From the service line, there's another ace for Penn State. Boy, way to get her team fired up. Strong lefty going from the right side of the court to the right side of the court. Second ace of the night for Dietering, third for Penn State. Penn State block, trying to add to their lead. Lee off the block and down. You know, it really is amazing because Goral is not an offensive threat at all. Her job up there is to block. So if you notice, if she goes up, she drops off. She does almost like a half pump, and they just release automatically to Lee. So Lee's got a tough job to do. The serving run continues for Penn State. Dietering making the difference, and Penn State up by eight, five points from forcing set five. See Alyssa Gaynor check into the match for Minnesota. And a tap gets the side out that Minnesota needed. And that's how easy it is, right? Stop the bleeding, give, give me a pass. And that's what you're saying as a setter. You can do this. Just pop the ball up so I can do something with the ball. Don't make it unplayable. That ends an 11-3 run by Penn State. A couple of aces on the service line from Dietering. And here's Rosado. Lee on the right side, adding to her overall career high, making 26 kills. And we will likely have another set if Penn State keeps this up. And the defense is almost frozen up there for Minnesota. It's just bouncing off that block. So that quick reaction defensively needs to get a little bit more from Minnesota. Nice back in serving for Penn State. Feeling. Here's Franti. Will hide out of the back row, terminates. And she's been quiet. So they've got Gaynor up there on the left side. I don't think Samantha's going to go to her right away, especially in this situation. She's going to find her go-to in the backcourt. You're right, Sarah Wilhite has been quiet in the fourth set. 16 kills for her, but we've not seen that usual production in the fourth that we have the rest of the year for the Gophers and Wilhite. So Penn State making some adjustments and not as many chances for Wilhite. Well, when she's in the backcourt and they can't pass, so that, that will kind of do it for him. Erica Hanley checks back in to serve. Thielen. Rosado got a piece. It plays off the net. And it wasn't going to come back over. That would have been four touches. It is. And so the points to Penn State. That was close. It was really close. They played some nice scrappy ball. And they have a lot of subs in there from Minnesota. Just to stir something up. See if they can... They can get something going, some momentum. Saw Gaynor in, and now Taylor Morgan, as well as Erica Hanley. Hanley will set. And that's the difficulty when you have a setter come off the bench who hasn't been playing much of the night. This time in the connection. You can't hesitate either. You, if you want a setter, you've got to own it and just give it to her. We went five a year ago between these two teams here in Rec Hall. We are on our way to a fifth once more. Off the antenna, set point for the Nittany Lions. It's a complete breakdown right now on Minnesota's part. You can almost see their body language and everything take a dive. But don't count them out because I'm sure their momentum will shift eventually. You know they will regroup for the fifth set. Will set over to Franti. A few new players on the floor for Minnesota, as we mentioned, but. Gainer. 
Turner slipped. Washington can't end the set. Franchi goes into the block and it comes down on the Gophers side. We're headed to set five. Huge point for Penn State to win that long rally headed into the fifth. Again, needing momentum because this set is only to 15. They got to make sure they start out strong. And Minnesota on the other end has to refocus and figure out what's going on maybe with their lineup and get their passing back on track. 12-2 run for Penn State to close. We'll have the fifth when we return. It's been a great night in Rec Hall thus far, and we're about to start the fifth set between number one Minnesota and number 15 Penn State. You look back to one of the great matches in the history of Big Ten Conference Volleyball in November of 2010, a five-set match that went 24 extra points over the course of the night, and Minnesota would win it 23-21 in the fifth on the strength of the performance by Lauren Gibmeyer. That was the last time that the Gophers defeated Penn State prior to beating them last season in the Sports Pavilion. And Minnesota, as we said, has not beaten Penn State in Rec Hall since 2004. Penn State, on the other hand, they want to knock off number one, stay unbeaten in Big Ten play, and we've got a race to 15 points. Here's this opportunity we were talking about in the beginning. In order to capitalize and gain some momentum for the rest of the season, this is huge for both teams. This is the first five set match of the season for Minnesota. Penn State has played two and they have lost two five set matches. Losing to North Carolina here at Rec Hall and then losing to Colorado in Boulder. Penn State's last eight matches have been decided in straight sets. Seven of Minnesota's last 11 were decided in three. Both teams on 10 and 11 match win streaks respectively between Penn State and Minnesota. One of those is going to come to an end. Zach looking for the first point. Weiskircher with the up. Lee, roll shot down the line, and it did catch the line. Minnesota going to contest it. Again, no replay available tonight. I love it. I was just watching who was put into this fifth set. We got Brianna Weiskircher serving against Alyssa Gaynor. And they go to each other and look at the shot. Tough to tell is there was a player in the way of our view on that last replay. Tap with the power. Fast. Very fast and clean. Great execution by these two. It was a perfect pass, but look at the delivery. Right on the money. Every swing, every point magnified in the fifth. And one of these two teams will stay with Wisconsin atop the Big Ten standings. Slowly is blocked. Lohman combining with Taft. Really too much time to give Simone Lee out there. It gives Minnesota that much time to set up a huge block. edge to the Gophers and just the second service air of the night for Minnesota. And we're tied at two. It's getting real, right? Haley <laughs> Washington serving for Penn State. Overpass and the kill for Borough. And she's up there doing a lot of the little things for Penn State. Unfortunately for Sarah Wilhite, see how she came up on her pass. You want to stay low and flat and stick your platform. Tap. Does get the contact that goes off Simone Lee for the second kill of the fifth for Hannah Tap. Both the taps have done a nice job on that right side pin, finding a way of being crafty. Nice tool, just clips her left side hand. Big swing from the center in Deidre. She just teed up on that one. And the nice thing is, you didn't, you didn't know it was coming. Seamless. She just goes up and after it. 
Russ Rose wants her to be that offensive threat. Five kills for her on the night, but that biggest one by far. Who'd, you, who'd that remind you of? A little bit of Micah Hancock with that lefty swing at the net. Hart sees the opening and takes advantage. Smart play, and she's listening to the bench. She's listening to our teammates. Abby, the setter on Penn State, is creeping up. As a setter, you have to play defense. Get back there and expect the ball to come to you. Bowman already has three aces on the night. She goes after Franti. There's the Lee off the block and down. And finds it. And I like the set selection going after Alexis Hart on the left side. She's given a little space to work with on that block. And you got to attack her. Simone Lee will check out. Laney Pierce comes in. The junior DS for the Nittany Lions. It's Paige Tap with the swing from the right side. Just trading it on the right side pin, and they found weaknesses on both sides. As a left side blocker, really hold your ground and press into the court. Force those hitters to hit around you. Therefore, the defense is set up. Slowly back in. She's in play in the back row. We've seen her connect on a few back row attacks tonight. calling for the floor to be wiped up as it's been a battle a long night in a warm gym and make sure that it's safe out there not too slick from players sweating and working hard you have to take advantage of those moments it gives yourself another <laughs> breath to refocus you got maddie beal over on the other side as a blocking sub they'll first go after simone lee franti with the kill that was a tight set. Good get by Abby Dieter and to get that ball out of the net. And Franti attacking high. That first step coming around. Up and over right in the seam. 13 kills for Franti, 12 digs. Second double-double of the year for her. Kendall White, the freshman serving. And a great decision by Seliger Swenson to take her own attack on two. Tricky, real tricky, and you haven't seen much of it from her, and that's why Washington wasn't expecting it. Ideally, it's the job of the left side blocker to step in, but if the setter's in the middle of the court, then the middle blocker has to go up after. With the exception of early in set one and late in set four, this match has been so even between these two teams. Second service air of the fifth for Minnesota. They only had one in the rest of the match. Very uncharacteristic, and I'm just watching them when they took out Samantha Seliger Swenson, put in a blocking sub. Maddie Beal was going to probably take the, that second ball to set. It didn't work out for him. He missed the serve. Holcomb serving for Penn State. Sandra Swenson will set hand attack. The solo block for Franti. You do not see that every day from her, and she is fired up as Penn State has the 8-6 lead in the fifth. We will switch sides, come back for the finish between Minnesota and Penn State. A rowdy wreck call in the fifth set with Penn State leading by two. And you look at the Big Ten standings, Wisconsin for the moment is alone at 5-0. Minnesota or Penn State will join them. Penn State has the lead. The Gophers still in a great spot here, down by just two. But again, the Big Ten title race. Last year, the Gophers won it by losing just two Big Ten matches. You have to think that even early in the season, these type of matches can play a factor into the Big Ten title. Hannah Tapp out of the timeout. She's not going to let her get away with that two times in a row. Hannah Tapp swinging hard cross court. 13 kills for Hannah Tapp. Yeah. 
Dietery, her own attack. Rosado got to that ball. Bump set for Frantic. Washington. A bit of an awkward contact, but she gets the point. Very awkward. I'm surprised she didn't go full boat on that. Took something off of it, especially with Rosado sitting right there. She's so good at getting these. And they're going to argue that it was up. Line judge called it down. Again, we reiterate, there is no replay tonight. It's not in every Big Ten venue. It's not for every match. So in case you're just joining us, that last play cannot be looked at again. Seliger Swenson with a tough set, and that's out of play. Penn State five points from taking the match. And here you see a tough serve, but Sarah Wilhite struggling on the serve receive. And therefore, it's a domino effect. So Samantha delivers a tough set, tight, and Hannah Tapp doesn't have much opportunity, a lot of places to put that. So again, it's a serve receive. It's coming down to the first contact, really important. We saw this in the international game when the USA played. Boy, that was exciting, and they had it, but it came down to the very fundamentals, the very basic of volleyball, Mike. Pass, serve, find the court, ball control. And those three plays alone at the very end, we saw a miss serve, a uh, miss serve receive opportunity, a shank, and then a ball control that went over the net. First contact is exactly what Hugh McCutcheon talked about with us this week coming into this match. It's been an issue in the fifth. We take a look what's played out so far. Hannah Tapp has had a couple of big swings in the fifth, but then Penn State went on a run. Huge. Well, she had a lot of space to work with, but here you go. She had up against a block. But here's Penn State fighting back, finding against the block. Allie Franti comes up huge with that solo block. 28 kills for Simone Lee. Her personal best tonight. And a tap with 13 kills, her eighth in double figures. State has played a couple of five-set matches. Again, this is the first five-setter of the year for Minnesota. Both teams just trying to stay unblemished in Big Ten play. Backup setter, Brianna Weiskircher serving for Penn State into the net. That's a tough one. You know, she'd like to have that one bad. Talking about the service errors for Penn State early on. They cut down on them late in the third and in the fourth set. That's the first one of the fifth, but two service errors for Minnesota in the fifth set. There's Sarah Wilhite serving. Theater sets Washington. I mean, she gets a kill even when she gets they get great touches on her. And that's what you need to do, slow her down, but they still can't dig her. Season best for Hallie Washington of 14 kills with zero airs, hitting 700. Hart. And a net violation that's going to be called on Penn State. A little bit too antsy up there at the net. Right now we're just trading points. saw her body go into the net. Lee off the block and Penn State. Three points from victory. Going up strong, huge transition. She does such a nice job getting all the way back and she gets the most out of her spike approach. If you watch her back swing, it's fast, and then she's able to get both arms up nice and high. Overpass, Goral goes off the head of Seliger Swenson. Thielen, off the block, Gophers can't get to it. Timeout for Minnesota as Penn State closing in on a win. Again, space for Thielen. She's looking at Alexis Hart up there, her target. How can I tool her? That's what she's talking about. And she does a nice job time in and time again. 
14 to 9 lead. We have seen deficits like this be a race, so don't count Minnesota out. They know that they can play clean volleyball and turn this around in the fifth. Such a treat to watch these two teams tonight battle back and forth. It really is, and it's so great because I'm watching their form and, and how they attack the ball, but also on the backcourt. I'm, I'm paying attention to their platforms, how they're moving to the ball. Everyone's so different from each other, but yet they're they're so skilled. You've got the best volleyball players here in the nation, a huge group of them. And it's so great that you're able to watch them and learn. How about Simone Lee? 29 kills, hitting 328. And it's been absolutely a joy to watch her play. A joy to watch both sides of the net. But this has been an incredible performance. An all-star from the state of Wisconsin, getting it done for Penn State. And Lee, if she does get one more kill, again, the win overall more important to her, but she would be the first Nittany Lion to record 30 kills since Nicole Fawcett in 2007. You think of all the great players who've been here at Penn State since 2007, and none of them have touched 30 kills. Deja McClendon, Megan Hodge didn't get the 30 hill, kills. That's a lot of kills, at least, Mike. At least not since Nicole Fawcett in 2007, but. Two points away are the Nittany Lions from taking down number one. Typically, it's Penn State that's the number one team and a bit of a reversal this year, but same difficulty playing in rec hall. Not a good first contact for Minnesota. Lee doesn't get a good swing on that ball. Here's Thielen, tools off the block. Match point upcoming for Penn State. She finds it. You talk about 30 kills and so many kills for Thielen. Well, Abby Dietering's doing a nice job of finding her hot hitters, and she keeps going back to them. Swenson behind the 10-foot line. Penn State looking to block the end of this one. Hart, the swing, keeps Minnesota alive. Great hang time again, but keeping that ball alive with Samantha in the backcourt. She likes to play up high defensively in the middle of the court. She pops it up, and there's Hart swinging on the way down. Match point number two for Penn State. And we'll have Loman on the line, who's got three aces. They would love to have one here. Lee off the block. That's her 30th kill, and Penn State takes down number one. What a nice way for Penn State to end that rally. Three-point pass by Franti. Tough set by Dietering, and with their Go to gal, Simone Lee, in the end. And who would have thought we would have gotten to this point after the start that Penn State had in set one? They climb all the way back to win that first set, all behind 2 1, and then take it in the fifth on the swing by Simone Lee. And she took, boy, she took that swing and she did not let off. She had her foot on that gas pedal the whole time. Lee had four kills in the fifth set. Penn State beats the number one team for the first time since 2014 when they beat Stanford in the national semifinals. 